Good morning. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, as you can see, Allison is not with us today. She took a vacation day. How dare she? Um, with me today is Mary Roebuck. She's another librarian. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself, Mary? Yeah. Hi, I'm Mary. I work also with Leah. Um, I'm the team librarian there. You can often find me in the basement relabeling comic books for about the millionth time because we've changed the mind <laughs> yet again about how best to catalog them. Uh, just did that with the manga. We have got a whole nice new manga section now. Um, yeah, I love comic books, really love movies. I've always loved movies, grew up with movies. It's the weirdo watching obscure uh, foreign movies before I even <laughs> had to when I went to became a college mate or um film major in college, but I've kind of grow up, grown out of the super um, pretentious movies, and I just <laughs> cover those in with a bunch of other genre films that I'm more a fan of now, but yeah. Mary um, is has been my guide to the movie world. We, um, <laughs> we have, we have, she has introduced me to movies that I had never watched before, and um, and she made me watch all the Marvel movies. I had I had picked up, I'd seen like a couple here and there, um, like watched them out of order. But Mary's like, no, 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 you got to do them in order. So we we had a movie marathon, a Marvel movie marathon. It actually took us a couple months, <laughs> but we watched them in order, and um, yeah, we just had a lot of fun with it, and we've been movie buddies. And I go to Mary for movie recommendations. So I thought, hey. Since Allison's not here, and we, Allison and I usually talk about books, Mary and I could come on and talk about movies. So um, I'd love to hear what some of your favorite movies are. Melanie likes uh, weird, obscure foreign movies also, Mary. So I, Yeah, I still love them. I still, still love them. <laughs> so um, what's, what's, okay, so we were just talking, I was just talking about the Marvel movies. What's your favorite? Definitely still Captain America Winter Soldier. It's the one that made me start reading superhero comics. But I never wanted to read them because the chronology is just so hard to get on top of. Right? But, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I discovered through finally getting into them that it's a great way to also make lists, which I love doing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that opened the door for superhero comics. I was already reading other comics, but... Um, other than that, I love Captain Marvel and Black Panther too. Are my my top three. Um, Captain Marvel made me cry. <laughs> yeah, I think those are my top three also. Um, Captain Marvel didn't make me cry, but it was like I really enjoyed that one. Um, and the 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 I have to say, I felt a little cheated with Endgame because like. There was this like whole, I feel, felt like they made this big deal of like, you know, Nick Fury sending the message, like, gotta get Captain Marvel. She's going to save us. And then we're introduced to Captain Marvel. And I felt like she was going to be like this huge savior. And then she turned out to be like such a small part of the movie. I mean, granted, I loved, I loved that scene when like all the women came and there was like that line of women and they were like, oh, we're tough. I loved that. Absolutely loved it. But it was like you wanted yeah. more of that. You wanted more of it, yeah. Oh, but like the build up, like oh, we gotta we, we gotta summon her from outer space. Like I felt like oh, she was gonna be a much bigger part of Endgame than she was. So yeah. I was disappointed for that. I'm pretty and sure. Weird. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that um, both Captain Marvel, maybe not before Endgame, but definitely before Infinity War. Um, that it was shot before Captain Marvel and Black Panther, so they didn't know how popular those movies would be. So mm. in both of them, they're not as big a role. I mean, Black Panther definitely is a bigger role in, in Endgame, yeah. but they didn't know how popular those characters and movies would be, so they don't have as big a role. So oh. It kind of well, sucks. should have figured that out. I know. I mean, come on. Right? I mean, who, who wouldn't have thought? I mean, people were so looking forward to those. I was still mad at Spider-Man because it pushed Spider-Man, whatever, the, when we finally got Spider-Man into, like, the Marvel 
you know, cinematic universe. Yeah. I was still mad at it because it pushed the uh, release of Captain Marvel and Black Panther. I wanted okay. those two movies, not another Spider-Man movie. Although I have to say he's my favorite Spider-Man. He is he is a really good Spider-Man. What's his name? Tom? Tom Holland. Thank you. He's my favorite Spider-Man. Um, Mary, Melanie said Ant-Man and the Wasp. I love Ant-Man. I think the Ant-Man movies are very like underrated. Like people don't give them enough credit. And like my my nephew was going through the Marvel movies with my mother and he like, he's like, oh, we can skip this. You just need to see this part. And he'll like, he just showed her like a small clip. I'm just like, how can you skip Ant-Man? I love, okay. I love Paul Rudd and I love that no matter what movie he is in, he plays Paul Rudd. Like he doesn't really act. He just delivers lines as if he's Paul Rudd. Like he's the same dude in every film that he's in. And it just, I, I, I love me some Paul Rudd. <laughs> Very good at Paul Rudd. <laughs> um, Melanie also liked uh, Black, Black Panther and Captain Marvel. I don't know what the mind two referred to. Um, I think, uh, she says, oh, okay. He, he, she says Tom Holland is adorable. Um, <clears throat> and Fairfield County Library also says that he's her favorite Spider-Man. So I, he's just, I, I don't know. He's just so charismatic and he's like that bumbling, you know, he's very bumbling, which is adorable, but somehow he still manages to come out on top. So you're like, you're rooting for, I don't know. He's just, he, he's he's a good guy. I he's like him. Clips. Spider Man yeah. is good with the clips. <laughs> what other movies? Um, <sighs> Let's see. Spider Man. He has such a gosh oh shucks kid. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's what I like about him. He's just so relatable. Whereas you know you can't relate to Tony Stark. He's just you know, but you can relate to the kid growing up poor and wanting to protect his neighborhood. I don't know. It just I think I saw oh. that lip battle. What did he sing? Yeah. I don't remember. Um but it he was a, a good outfit. Was dressed like a woman. Um, what was it? It was she was dressed like a woman. He did a, a female yeah. song. Right? Tom Holland mm -hmm. on lip sync battle. I love lip sync battle. It is so much fun. Um and yeah. it was adorable in that oh, oh oh carrie says that she would love to hear a review of cats uh -huh. um, mary carrie and i went to see cats and um uh, you mean a ptsd flashback to when we saw cats it was, it was traumatic. um i think very loudly in the the theater i i expressed displeasure at something and like the people in front of us were like you could tell that they were very like fancy like theater people and um and uh they were very unhappy with with, with me but i just i couldn't hold it in i I'm, I'm one of those people i'm very emotive when i am watching something if i'm startled i scream if i'm it's hysterical watching scary movies with me um but like but when i'm like oh my god did they actually just do that i said that out loud at the theater and yes the couple in front of me was not happy <laughs> oh tara just watched the new secret garden i haven't seen that it looks really good um oh she said it was just okay good to know um she also likes singing in the rain Oh, he sang, was he? Rihanna's Umbrella. Oh, I, did you do a mashup of the two singing in the rain and Rihanna's Umbrella? Oh. Is that what it was? I think that may have been what it was. Oh, that would be good. I, I remember it being good. I just don't remember what he sang. Yeah, I don't remember. I'm kind of musically ignorant. Like I never know artists or songs or names or titles or albums or any of that stuff. So <laughs> don't ever ask me for music recommendations. You'll get The Doors and um, that's about it. That's oh, about yeah, it. The Lannis 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 Lannis. I love her. Yes. I love her. Um, we also, where was that movie we drove? We drove, uh, we drove to Cleveland to see 
um, the Hateful Eight uh, because yeah. it was coming out special on 72 millimeter um, on film. And at the time, I thought that was the only place we could see it, the closest place we could see it. So we drive all the way to Cleveland, see the movie. The experience of seeing the movie in a packed theater was great with someone like a good like viewing companion even like had a chat with the person behind me about how like fantastic it was to hear the clickety clack of a you know actual camera and we were playing. sitting up way high yeah so we were very close to the booth so yeah we could hear it we could hear that I, I was very unimpressed with the movie it was just a bunch of angry men sitting in a cabin killing each other and talking it was like you know, i enjoyed the movie yeah I, I'll, I'll admit the whole film part of it didn't hold like special meaning for me um i know that you are like a film aficionado so that was something very special for you and we got there and she pulled out her notebook where she keeps her notes about her movies and her reviews and her like you know during the movie she would she would jot jot things down which i thought was just fabulous i love that you you are about movies the way I am about rubber ducks. Um, <laughs> you're very, it's like your thing, like you're very into it. Um, so I love that you are so into your movies that way. But I will admit I was surprised. Although I don't know that I should have been considering we drove three hours to see it on a special <laughs> screen. I don't know why I was surprised by that. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Leftover from my film school days. <laughs> Never stop taking notes. Um, Melanie says she can't remember the last new to me movie she watched. There's not much coming out right now unless you're watching stuff on streaming. Right. Um, I, I'm trying to think when the last time I was in a theater, when that was. I can't, well, I'd have to. Yeah. Um, yeah. Christmas time, at Christmas time, Maybe it was New Year. I think we went to see Knives Out. Oh. Um, I think that was the last time, that was the last thing I saw in a theater, which that movie's fabulous. If you haven't already seen it, rent it from the library. Oh, not rent it, borrow it from the library. Why do I say that? Because I'm talking about movies. Um, it's a really good one. Um, and yeah, Melanie, I am with you. I'm really sad that we can't do the Manhattan Shorts at the library this year. Yes. Um, they are still screening, and the, the they extended it through the entire month of October. So if you go on the Manhattan Short website, if that's something that you're into, you can totally see somewhere where they're still being screened. We just we can't do it right now. Um, social distancing um, issues and the space that we use to do that is completely filled up with returns to the library. We're quarantining all of our return material for for, for at least four days, um, sometimes longer, depending on like what day it got returned. Um, so everything's quarantined and that takes up a whole, whole lot of room because you people borrow a whole lot of items, which again, I love, keep doing it, but um, yeah, it takes up some space. <laughs> Um, yeah. I'm with you on British mystery television. I just saw one called No Offense by the guy that does um, Shameless. Um, and that I saw on Hoopla. I used up my 10 views and was really annoyed because it was like right at the beginning of the season two. But it's already October, so I can I can watch some more. But yeah, No Offense on Hoopla. If you like British uh, mystery shows or British cop shows, very good one. Yeah. Hoopla does have some some really good british shows um i i haven't really done much video viewing on hoopla i'm more into the ebooks and the audiobooks there so tara says last christmas was the last movie she saw in the theater melanie is not willing to go to a movie theater right now nor am i Alice. because like i don't want to take my mask off where there are other people and it's not a movie without buttery popcorn i'm sorry I have to have my buttery popcorn. Allison and I had a big philosophical uh, com debate about whether we felt willing to go to the movie theater to see Tenet. Um, <laughs> she got input from one of her friends who saw Tenet and, and witnessed how the theater, it sounds like the theater is actually doing a really good job being safe. And mm -hmm. um, when she's, her friend saw it, it was completely empty. So I might be inclined, um, but it sounds like Tenet, sadly, 
it's it's not the movie we wanted it to be. So it was cool. Oh. So in, in, in Inception. Yeah. Or Inception. I have, really. oh, ooh, the new Downton Abbey, Abbey movie um, coming wait, out. Another one? I, I think, think it's coming out. Wait, it coming out on DVD. Downton Abbey. Does she mean Downton Abbey? You probably mean Downton Abbey. I didn't know there was going to be another one. Oh, I totally read that as Downton Abbey. Um, I'm sure that's what she means. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Or maybe she's talking about it coming out on DVD. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I saw that one in theater. That was really good. But the first, I haven't seen that one yet, and which is crazy because I loved that series. I don't know why I haven't seen the movie yet. Um, they did a really good job, like touching base with all the characters, okay. but not making it feel like a clip show. Like it still felt like a cohesive story. Okay. Yeah, I, I really need to. You know what we need to do? I need to go back and rewatch the series and then watch the movie. Oh, just Ooh, yesterday. It was like yesterday. Awesome. I'll, I'll look forward to that. Yeah. I, I'm trying to think. I had a thought and it popped out of my head. I don't know. It does that sometimes. <laughs> um, I saw um, Old Guard on Netflix recently. Um, it's a comic book adaptation, and I had recently read the comic. I really liked it. Um, but, you know, with any comic book adaptation, you get a little trepidatious. So I wasn't, I didn't have much hope, even though Charlize Theron was in it, and I adore her. She's good at everything. Um, but I'm watching it, and it's good. And then it gets better. And then they get rid of one of my least favorite sexist tropes that I hated in the book. I was like, Ser so the whole thing of, Here's this like million year old woman and she still doesn't know how to use technology because women are bad at computers. And <laughs> that's not even a spoiler because within the first five minutes of the movie, they wipe that out. Charlize Theron's version of the character knows how to use technology. Um, but it kept, just kept getting better and better. And I was like, why is this so good? Why are the music choices so great? Why are these female characters so much better fleshed out? I get to the end, it comes up Directed by Gina Blythe, um, oh, I'm gonna, Gina Prince Blythe, Prince, damn it. <laughs> Nick, watch your mouth. You can't say that. Um, while you're looking at the name. Gina Prince Blythe, <laughs> I totally forgot her name. Gina Prince Blythe was one of my favorite directors. Um, she did In Love, Love and Basketball. She did uh, Beyond the Lights. I had no idea she was directing it. Um, it, yeah, it was very exciting, it, and it, 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 yeah, it was really good, um, and it's very exciting to watch a movie that you end up liking, and I'm surprised it's directed by one of your favorite directors. So. Yes, and for clarification there, when we were like, what's going on? It looks like a second movie is in the works. It was announced this week, um, uh, and he too confirmed it. Yep, I think it was in the works for January, according to... That must be 2021. Yeah. Yes. That wait. When are they shooting it though? They can't be. Well, I guess they could start shooting it now. Well, they're but... doing weird things, like where they're like putting like plexiglass in scenes uh -huh. and like shooting like one side of the room and then the other side of the room so that you don't see the plexiglass yeah. um, in between. Tara wants to know if anyone has seen Booksmart. I have yes. not. You did? I did. It was very good. Very fun. Very smart. Um, I'm excited about Olivia Wilde as a director. I'll have to check that one out. I don't, I don't even know what that one's about. It's just about like friends, girls being friends and being smart. It's like, it's like, it's, well, it's kind of like a female super bad, but better. <laughs> okay. So you really just kind of dumb it down. It's like a female super bad. Okay. I enjoy like, uh, I'll admit it. I enjoy seeing like, a female cast. We went to see Ghostbusters. Okay. I cried oh, too. Story. We actually had to go see it twice because the first time Mary and I went to see Ghostbusters, her phone just starts like going off. We both forgot that Mary was supposed to be at work that day. Um, it was a Sunday and <laughs> she forgot that she had traded and um, I do her schedule and I forgot that she had traded. <laughs> yeah, she was supposed to be at work. So we had to like leave the theater like seven minutes into the movie, ten minutes into the movie. It was ridiculous. Well, I, so I didn't 
cool ride, so I had to make you leave. Like, I couldn't just leave you to enjoy the movie. Well, I, I theoretically, I could have walked. It's not that far from my house. <laughs> but, and Melanie, yes, Melanie is the one who called. And uh, so she, so we had to go see it a different day. <laughs> but then it wasn't like at the local theater. We had to drive and then, but yeah. So we, we did see that. And uh, Tara mentioned Ocean's 8. Uh, I I enjoyed that. Um, that was a really good cast. You, you see a lot of those like guy movies where there's like a group of them doing something cool. It's not as often that you see the the female cast doing that. Yeah. So that's been something that I really enjoyed. Yeah. Well, that's why I liked, uh, I saw Terminator Dark Fate. And yes, there was still, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. But it was mostly Linda Hamilton and um, the woman from Halt and Catch Fire, um, whose name I'm also going to blank on. Um, we can look it up. Just being buff and kicking butt and, and <laughs> you know, getting rid of uh, Mackenzie Davis, uh, yeah. defeating killer robots. And it was, it was very enjoyable. I, yeah. yeah. Any, any group female movie I'm down for. Yeah. I will probably cry during. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, I think it's, we're finally getting that, you know, it's just, so it's, it is a big deal to finally get that, you know, especially when you, when they show women being like tough and capable and strong, like that is just something that I think is too often missing in movies. So I appreciate being able to see that. Yeah. And not, but not just that one dimensional strong female character, like they have dimension. And I think you see that when you start to see more women getting behind the camera, like Gina Prince Bythewood directing Old Guard, like everything I've heard about it is that every character, not just the female characters, were more multidimensional. And, yeah. and you definitely get any time something's opened up to more voices, you get a better representation of characters yeah. from different perspectives. I just love it. <laughs> And I think, you know, like, it, and even the whole, like, you see that also, like, in books where, where, where you're bringing in, like, there's that, that movement for do, for, like, own voices, um, people telling their authentic experience, like, you know, it's not some person writing about some other culture or their idea of what that experience is, it's that person writing about their own um, experience. So I think that's really important, um, you know, to see women behind the camera, to see people of color behind the camera, just the, the more diverse. And <clears throat> I think it just, it enriches the storytelling, both in books and in movies. <laughs> so, um, I will, I'm going to, I'm going to go out, I'm going to, I'm going to tell everyone what my favorite movie is. Yes. It's the Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid? The Little Mermaid. <laughs> I don't think I knew that. You didn't? No. I love that movie. There's just something about it. Like, just the opening music to that movie, like, I hear it, and it just, like, lifts my spirit. I, yeah. I remember going to see it with my sister and, like, her friend um, when it came out. Like, I saw it in the theater, and I think they took me because, like, I was, like, what year did it come out? I was, I think I was like sixth grade and like they, they had the day off of school. Um, we had the day off of school, all of us for some reason. And they took me, um, to see that. I think my mom made my sister take me to see it. I don't, I don't know, but like, I loved it. And it just was, it was magical. I have a whole collection of little mermaid stuff. Um, and like, I'm not even kidding, a whole collection of Little Mermaid stuff. And, um, yeah, that, that movie just, I could probably deliver it line for line. Um, I can't sing. um, you don't want to hear me sing, but I cannot help myself when I watch it. I do, I do sing <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> um, so yes, that's my favorite movie. Do you have a favorite favorite? That's impossible. It changes every day or every yeah. time I see a new movie. 
Um, well, while you're thinking, yeah. Tara says she can't wait to see the movie Nightingale based on Kristen Hanna's book. Ooh, um, the author really wanted a female director and Melanie Laurent was chosen. It's coming out next year. That is awesome. Yeah. Um, I haven't read that book, but I have had to buy so many copies of it for the library. And like, there have been several copies that like um, have gotten destroyed at like branches and they're like, I need a new copy because it's so popular and it keeps going out. So mm -hmm. I need, I need to get on the ball and read that book before the movie comes out. So I do that. I like to read the book before the movie because I just find the book so much more there's just so much more in a movie in and in a book than in a movie. You just can't get all of the, the thoughts and the feelings and the motivations behind people's actions explained in a movie the same way. I think it's just, it's a richer story in a book, but that's my I, own personal opinion. I think that's just because so many movie adaptations are just not very good. <laughs> I think if you find, if you get a good movie adaptation, it can be, um, I think as good as the book sometimes. Not all the time. It's hard to do, but. Um, uh, Tara says um, it's on Hoopla, uh, so I can listen to it. She knows that I'm a I'm an audiobook listener. She says it's a great listen, so that is good to know. I will probably do the audiobook version. Um, Melanie says Feast of the Seven Fishes is one of her favorite movies. I added that because of her to my list, but I haven't seen it yet. I, you know, one of um, Big Fish. Big fish with Tim Horton or Tim, yeah, no, not Tim Horton, Tim Burton, um, maybe with um, um, Ewan McGregor. Yes, I really loved that movie. Like, it was just, it was just so magical, you know. It just was one of those movies that just, I don't know, it just was, I found it really touching and inspiring, and I just loved that movie. I'd have to go look at my movie shelf. I've only got a few minutes left. I have to go look at my movie shelf for movies that I've actually purchased. Um, it's really hard when you're when you watch so much to pick a favorite. That's the yeah. way I am with books. People ask me my favorite book. I got nothing. I can't. Yeah. I can't. I can't narrow it down at all. I could be like, okay, like in this genre, these are some of the ones that I, I really like, or these are the ones that I go back to a lot, but I, I could never, ever, ever pick a favorite book. I tend um, to more pick favorite directors instead. Like Alfonso Cuaron is one of my very favorites. Like he's the reason I started reading the Harry Potter books. Um, and Gina prince Bythewood is of course a favorite, um, a favorite director. Her name is very hard for you to remember. <laughs> yes, I just keep saying it over and over again, so I don't get it mixed up. Oh, um, I haven't seen the latest Emma. I like Aunt Anya Taylor Joy though; she's very good. I haven't seen that either, which is crazy because I love Jane Austen, both the books and the movies. And ugh, yeah, I, I have to say, I love the Pride and Prejudice, the the Kira Knightley version, but there's something about the 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 Colin Firth version that was just well the I, white t-shirt the white t-shirt the, the white shirt yes like the, it has gone on white. tour around it has been in museums it goes on tour um but yeah it just the, that that Colin Firth version is <clears throat> I guess because it's so true to the books I feel like you know it's how many hours is it? Eight, ten? I don't remember. It's it's, it's wow. really long. So I think when you do something really long like that, because there was more of a mini series, um, you're able to to be much truer to the story rather than you know condensing it down to two hours. So yeah, that was I love that that version. Um, so Melanie's favorite. <laughs> I think it's everybody's favorite. I mean, it is. Nothing against the Kara Knightley version, because I will say, I have watched that like five or six times. I love it. And when it's on, yeah, I'm totally stopping on that channel. And that's where I am for the next two hours. But the Colin Firth version is just perfect. Yes. <laughs> All right. So it looks like we have talked for half an hour. Um, it was great chatting with all of you today. Um, and 
most of these movies that we've talked about, you can probably borrow from the library. So place your holds and we will get them to you. And yeah, I hope you have a great weekend. And Aww. oh, she, uh, <laughs> Melanie was a librarian in Maryland when um, it was reshown the the uh, Pride and Prejudice, and she had a, a girl come in because she couldn't wait to see the end <laughs> because it was a mini series. So she had to find out how it ends. It's yes, I I love that. So hi Scott. Um, you have a great day too. Everyone have a a a great weekend and we'll see you back here next Friday, 1030. You take care. Bye bye. <laughs> Gotta stop it. Where do I stop it? <laughs> <laughs>